Attack target! Enemy torpedo spotted! Attack target! Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are looking at British carriers. Hang on a minute. <laughs> if you've been around in this channel for a while, uh, you may have realized that um, there's a suspicious absence of reviews for carriers and that has a very good reason. Because I'm terrible at playing carriers. <laughs> Probably I'm not that terrible anymore because I actually practice a little bit in these things now, but um, uh, carriers are not my forte, let, let me put it this way. So uh, me being a carrier with no alcohol involved is not a usual occurrence, but uh, they're British, they're new and they're carriers and it's, it's going to be a whole new tech tree line. So, you know, might as well try and uh, finally get good. Now, uh, when, let me quickly show you something. Uh, there's a carrier that I have and that I'm actually pretty good at and that's the Indomitable. I have her in my personal account and uh, I enjoy this carrier for a very good reason because if you look the Indomitable has has dive bombers and has fighters and doesn't have any torpedo bombers. Now the good thing about dive bombers is that they fire and forget and you don't need to aim with them. <laughs> so for somebody who is not very good at controlling multiple air groups at the same time uh, they're ideal. <laughs> so, so I, when I heard that there's going to be a British, um, a British uh, carrier line, I, I was hopeful. I was like, oh, more of that, please. <laughs> so, of course, when I looked at the Argus, uh, the very first thing that stood out was the conspicuous absence of any dive bombers whatsoever. And the only thing she has is torpedo bombers. Dum, dum, da. <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> so much for that. Well then, uh, I th um, let's have a very quick look at the uh, at the Argos herself. So, what is that thing? Uh, the Argos actually existed. Uh, this was one. This was a cruise a cruise liner. So, the very early aircraft carrying ships in the British Navy didn't quite have a landing deck. So, mostly, you know, you. You threw, out, you threw out planes, but then you couldn't really get them back on board anymore. Unless they were seaplanes, then you could use a crane to fish them back out again. And around about in the early, in the early stages, or just before the, war, uh, the First World War, uh, people started, uh, started coming up with ideas to say, hey, why don't we make a carrier that we can actually land our planes back on? Because, you know, that might be beneficial for the general, you know, carrierness of things. 
And the Admiralty was like, man, I don't really care. And then at the end of the First World War, the Admiralty was more like, yeah, maybe we do care. And that's that's where these things came from. This was an Italian cruise liner that was that happened to be produced in, in the UK in the shipyards, and they bought it. I mean, half of it, the, the whole bit, not the, not the actual cruise liner bit, and they stuck, uh, they stuck a deck on it. Initially, they also did stick islands on it. Note the plural, not one, but two islands, and a bridge between the two islands. So effectively, there was a there, there, there was a big ass goalpost in the middle of this thing. <laughs> And the idea was that, you well, first of all, you had a bridge so you could walk from one end of the ship to the other without having to cross the flight deck. And um, I'm trying to simulate that here slightly with the, with the, uh, with the London Bridge. And uh, you could put a net in the middle. So in case something went wrong, you know, you could catch the plane with a net. Uh, they gave up on that idea relatively quickly, uh, mostly also due to the fact that there was a lot of turbulence on this. But, you know, everybody was still trying to figure out what carriers actually were good for and if they were good for anything. But, uh, yeah, they did get rid of the superstructure, uh, which which left them in somewhat of a pickle when it came to, well, you know, how are we actually going to sail this ship? There has to be somebody, you know, some form of boathouse or, or, or pilot compartment or some, some, some sorts. So what they actually did, and I'm not sure if, if it's that square here in the front or if this is an actual elevator for the planes, because I couldn't really find any details of it, but this thing has a retractable, uh, like a, a retractable little building that, that retracts into the deck. So if you're not actually using it as a carry, you can kind of crank that out and then you can have somebody with a steering wheel who can actually sail the ship. <laughs> it's a really cute idea, really. But uh, yeah, uh, this ship never really got into combat much. Uh, she was mostly a, a seaplane tender, but she did get up all the way into the Second World War because she was actually classified at the First Naval Treaty as an experimental carrier and as such didn't have to be scrapped. So this thing ferried an awful lot of planes around in the countryside, uh, among them the, the ferry Swordfish, which we're going to be talking about in another video in a little bit more detail, because there's also a very, very interesting thing that the British did. But yeah, so effectively, um, we have a seaplane tender here, more or less. Well, she did have a landing deck, and uh, she was used a lot for practicing. But right here, we have a, a plane ferry at Tier 4. No, it's Tier 4, right? It's the very first carrier you're going to unlock. So you don't expect a huge amount of goodness from these things. So let's um, actually let me, let me kick all these Americans out here from the comparison and put that in there. And let's head over to the tech tree and compare her to the other tier 4 carriers, because there aren't that many of them. There's the Hosho uh, that we're going to add. And then there is uh, the mighty, the one and only Langley that we're going to add to the comparison as well. All right. Should have probably set that up beforehand, shouldn't I? Anyway, uh, let's get on with the show. So Argus versus Langley. Uh, there are no skills or anything on these things. Uh, they they have no no armor. Uh, they just don't. No hit points, no armor at this tier. The Argus is surprisingly quick for a tier 4 carrier with 20 knots. I mean, quick with big air quotes around it. And um, she has guns. 6 102mm. Uh, these are actually dual purpose guns. So these were dual purpose AA guns. Uh, so 102 millimeter guns, a uh, bit slow in the reload, doesn't do an awful lot of damage, but she does get six of them. Uh, we have no dive bombers, but in return we get the fairy swordfish as torpedo bombers. So we've got 12 torpedo bombers uh, in two squadrons and uh, two bombers per squadron. So you effectively get four torpedo bombers out, comparing that to the, uh, to the dive bomber squadron that you get on... Uh, to two dive bomber squadrons that you get on the Langley, which means you get an eight, a total of eight planes out into the countryside. Uh, comparing her to the Hosho, because the Hosho also, I think, has torpedo bombers. Let's find out. Uh, you see, I'm not super familiar. Uh, so the Hosho gets dive bombers, and yeah, the Hosho gets torpedo bombers, so we can at least compare. So the Hosho gets one flight of three, and uh, they don't have as much hit points, but they do a lot more damage with these torpedoes, and the torpedoes are generally just better on that thing. 
So we have a seaplane tender with two torpedo bomber squadrons, which are a bit crap, really, because <laughs> you only get four planes all in all out um, all at, at, one, at one point in time. Uh, equipment, what can we put in there? Well, not much. I mean, we don't really have a choice. <laughs> you can get the carrier hangar modification, which gives you more torpedo bomber capacity by, uh, in, in, in reduction of dive bomber capacity, which is suits us just fine because we don't have any dive bombers. So we get this gets you a 20% torpedo bomber capacity for free, which is much appreciated because you only get 12 off the buggers. And that's not a lot. I've put propulsion and, and steering because uh, the defense mods don't really make any sense. Uh, the, AA, uh, the AA defense is actually, we haven't really looked at that part. Uh, the AA isn't great with 40. Uh, you're not going to shoot. You're going to. You're not going to shoot much down if the enemy carrier wants you dead, and this happens frequently uh, in in lower tiers because they just go for the carrier snipe. Just chalk it off. You're not going to shoot any planes down. The best you can get is try to. You know, you're not going to have any AA on your friendly ships, so there's not all that much you can do about that either. Unless it's a tier five game, then you might have a little bit. But there's not an awful lot that you can do. People just do that in the early tiers. It's just something people do. Just you know, live with it. Uh, the one thing that stands out is the surface detection with 6.12 kilometer. That's destroyer level of surface detection. I'm not sure where they get these ideas from. I mean, are you seeing the size of this thing? <laughs> this is a cruise ship. How is that having destroyer surface detection? <laughs> oh, well, well I'm, I'll, I'll take it, I guess, but um, uh, weird. Anyway, so that means I am actually um, using the high grade coal for better concealment and the two uh, the two uh, plane supplies here instead of the uh, AA bonus because you know we don't have a lot of AA and it's not going to make any difference so uh, instead we'll try not to be spotted um, you can you, they, we are tier 4 there's no historical camo so we're just going to throw the seaborne assault onto that and I have put a commander on here which at the lower tiers the only thing that really gives you is the um, uh, plus eight percent return speed on aircraft squadrons which is very much appreciated uh, other than that there's really nothing here and I, we don't know what the uh, what the higher tier uh, things are going to be capable of actually that said let's have a very very quick look at the furious and we're not going to review the furious or something i just want to see what that thing has in uh you know in order to get a bit of an idea where we're heading with this whole with this whole setup so we seem to be sticking with 102 mil guns uh, but we are getting dive bombers uh, and we are actually getting fighters as well, so they are they, they are moving towards a, but still these really tiny torpedo bomber squadrons. So we'll, um, but yes, uh, actually that's one thing to mention. The dive bombers are the carbon bomber variety, so they are dropping a lot of bombs. So I think this will be, uh, yeah, focused pretty much on setting fire, so on setting fires, getting floods, that kind of thing. All right, um, Argus, let's uh, let's get into a game. Our first battle is a tier five battle, and you're gonna see that happening a lot because uh, there's really just not that many people people playing at tier three. So uh, more often than not, you're getting dragged into tier five. We're up against an enemy Argus, uh, a Kaiser, Königsberg, Furutaka, a Svetlana, an Izukaza, and a Clemson. Now it is it is low tier, <laughs> so uh, don't expect uh, you know. A huge amount of, of coordination or anything uh, but we will do what we can so we are in a very sneaky carrier and all I have is two flimsy squadrons of two torpedo bombers each and uh, a bunch of AA guns so uh, we, we can move forward a little bit but we definitely do need to get our torpedo bombers out now one thing that you can torpedo notice here if, uh, if you're not super familiar with carriers is that they have well, they're just two, two of them, so they, they are dropping the torpedoes relatively narrow, on a relatively narrow spread, which makes aiming a little bit easier. So first of all, we're going to send these two out to scout and find around find out what's happening around DCAP, because there is a destroyer out here. Now, um, I might try and torpedo the destroyer. Uh, yeah, there's the Izukaze, and we'll see if we can torpedo him from here. I'm coming from the right side, because he is an island in front of him, and I don't want to dunk into the island. But uh, dropping destroyers is difficult. And uh, let's see if we can get some torpids in. Ah, he just missed them. And now the island's in the middle. No, actually he got hit by one. Okay, now the island is in the way. So I'm gonna have to try and circle them around. 
Uh, no, I, I, I clicked too late and uh, it dropped it on the island. Oh well. <laughs> hey, I hit some, I hit a destroyer with a torpedo, right? <laughs> that wasn't terrible. And I've got myself into position. Unfortunately, I'm spotted, but the enemy carrier either it doesn't seem to be interested in dropping me personally. And uh, uh, so this is about as far as I want to go forward. I am air spotted, but not for long anymore. So do I need to do something about that Izokaza? Or uh, I think he's just going to get himself torpedoed by the Clemson, isn't he? Uh, let's see, I've got some dive bombers out just in case, but I think no. Uh, Clemson got him. Good, good job, Clemson. So now we can start dropping the Kaiser over there, uh, German battleship. And there is also a cruiser sailing around somewhere there. But um, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get uh, perma floods because that's really the only way I can actually do damage. Now the problem is, of course, you only have two torpedoes. And uh, they don't have a great fire, uh, the great flooding, greatest flooding chance in the world. I think it was like 12% or something. Uh, so, uh, wait, what's the rest of my team doing? Um, they're dying very rapidly. Is what they're doing. Uh, so, that's the. Um, I think that's our, that was our Clemson that just got taken out by the Svetlana over there. So we might have to do something about that cruiser before we uh, take on the uh, the battleship. And once again, I, uh, I am I am unspotted because I have a very, very good surface detection. This is a, it's a very sneaky carrier. So let's tr see if I can manage to drop that cruiser. Unfortunately, that cruiser is in a full turn, which is going to make that it'd be very, very much more sporting of him if he was going to sail in a straight line. But I mean, I'm going to do what I can. So my first drop. Yep, that's two torpedo hits and a, uh, and a flood. And I think I shot his, his steering off or something. And the flood is ticking. So I'm just circling them around and trying to see if I can if I can get another drop onto him. But I think he's just slowing down. Let's see if we can get that drop on target. Uh, might just be just not enough to, for the torpedoes to arm. Uh, okay, one of them armed. And he survives on like one hit point. Okay, come on, people. He's on no hit points. Just kill him. Okay, I've got to, I've got to start dropping the Kaiser because uh, he's going to make mincemeat out of my cruisers otherwise. And that's Svetlana. Svetlana is still alive. I don't know what these people are doing, but um, okay, we've 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 done. We've, I think we shot the rudder of the Kaiser Bismarck style, uh, and I'm still not. Uh, I'm air spotted again, but uh, I can still sit behind my island here. But I do have to at some point move. Uh, the enemy team is holding three of the four capture circles, and finally the Svetlana is dead. But all, um, there are two cruisers and there's a Kaiser, so I'm trying to help out as much as I can with this battleship here. Uh, and see if we can get him killed. Unfortunately, no flood again. And by themselves, my torpedoes aren't doing a great deal. So uh, let's see if we can do something about this German battleship. Uh, this might be a little bit late. Oh, is he accelerating? Uh, I think he's accelerating. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I got a flood. Uh, and I've shot his rudder off again. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. Uh, because he, he, he must have just damaconed. So now he shouldn't have rudder control, which means he's going to sail in a circle. Um, which means that he should have his guns should be out of alignment and he might not be able to f to flatten our cruiser. Uh, I am gonna have to move. Okay, he's gonna flat out anyway. I'm gonna have to move and see if I can grab a capture circle because uh, our cruiser obviously isn't interested, and we've just lost the Omaha on the other side. So it's just me and oh uh, yeah, we're gonna lose this on points I think, because I'm just also not quick enough. And obviously now I'm air spotted because now the enemy carrier doesn't have anything else to shoot at. Uh, to, to their credit, uh, they have really not um, had a, made a big effort of trying to kill me. Okay, there's a Furtaka and a Königsberg. Uh, thinking about dropping the Königsberg, but I think the Furtaka is going to be the bigger problem because the Königsberg is chasing after me and the Furtaka has got long-range torpedoes. So let's try if we can see if we can drop the Furtaka. Um, unfortunately, he is in the turn, so I think um, I should have come from the other side because once again I'm going to drop... Yeah, I'm going, I dunked this onto the island again, didn't I? <laughs> oh, well... Um, uh, yeah, we, uh, we we are now uh, we are now yeah we're spotted. So uh, uh, at this point, it's time to use the guns, and uh, I think at this point we're dead because we are not holding any capture circles, and the four attackers probably got torpedoes away. And um, uh, yeah, even even if he's not going to kill me with torpedoes, uh, there's a Königsberg behind me and a four attacker in front, so there's absolutely nothing I can do. Uh, Furutaka, has, has he stopped? I don't know, I'm just trying to line up my dive bombers before I die, but he takes me out and... Uh, yeah, I just couldn't get away quick enough anymore to do something about these two. And even if I had, uh, there was no way we were going to win this. So, we've done what we could. And, um, well, I've done 30,000 points of damage in a tier 4 carrier, you know. It's not terrible. I mean, I can do a lot more in a, in a tier 4 battleship, but... <laughs> 
or in a tier 4 destroyer for that matter. Uh, and the Königsberg takes, uh, takes everybody out. So yeah, Königsberg is an excellent uh, tier 5 light cruiser. And yep, yeah, takes, uh, takes the MVP. But we have not done badly. Let's see how we compare to the rest of our team. Me and a carrier. Come on. Load. Load. Game. There. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yes. <laughs> we came up on top of our team. In a, in a bottom tier carrier. <laughs> With me at the helm. Um, all right. That doesn't say very much about my skills of playing a carrier. It says a little bit more about the rest of my team, really. <laughs> but it's tier four, you know. Uh, what can you expect? All right. Let's do another one. Okay, and we are up, uh, obviously again, bottom tier. We are up against um, a Langley, a Congo, a New York, Wyoming, Bellerophone, a Hawkins, and a Dane. No destroyers. That's good, because I can't hit the buggers anyway. But, um, you know, uh, we do have, an, uh, we do have a, an Italian cruiser on our side, so that might be a little bit, would have been a little bit useful against destroyers, but like it stands, no destroyers, just lots and lots of battleships. Now, tier 4 battleships, you're usually not getting a lot of AA. Tier 5 battleships start seeing some of it, so... And we do only have two of these rather squishy... Uh, pay, uh, uh, rather squishy cloth planes. And then again, they have taken down the Bismarck, so... Um, well, I'm sending them out over this way. I'm just gonna try and see if I can spot anything that we can work with. Uh, yeah, we've got 14 all in all. Which um, you do have to occasionally be a little bit careful with. If you get them shot down too much, you run out of planes. But uh, okay, there's the Hawkins. Let me see if we can drop him. No, he's already maneuvering. So maybe, maybe. And, and now he's maneuvering. He's turning, he's turning. Okay, I changed my mind. I'll drop the New York. Okay, at this point, I am, I've been sail flying around in the uh, Hawkinses and New Yorks. Uh, AA bubbles for so long that I think my two planes got shut down. Yeah, there they go. All right, uh, let's not do that again. That was uh, that was a waste of planes. But at least we know what's there, so that's a, that's a start. All right, uh, we're moving forward. There's an island. If you're moving your carrier forward and you do not want to pull an ergo maneuver, uh, just point it at the next best island because then it'll just run into the island and you don't have to forget about it. <laughs> that's what I normally do. Uh, so, who, do, who are we going to drop? Wyoming? Bellerophon. What is the Bellerophon doing in here? Isn't that a tier 3 ship? We're in a tier 5 battle. How did that get in here? Are we in a tier 5 battle? Or didn't I not pay attention? No, there, there was a New York there, wasn't it? Yeah, there's a tier 5 battle. It must be a failed platoon or something. Okay, uh, we'll be dropping the Wyoming since we're here. And uh, let's see if we can get a flood. No flood. Second drop. You see, you see, tier four battleships. AA is not going to do anything to your to your planes, so don't even have to worry about it. And these things are so slow. Nope, still no uh, no flooding. And um, well, now we're back to the island, and we're gonna have to wait again. Okay, there's something coming around the uh, the western flank that the people are pinging on the map. Uh, yeah, there's a. Well, it's fine. I mean, we've got. We've got all our team here, so it's not a huge issue, but um, okay, I'm going to drop the New York again, because that is definitely one of the more, uh, as a top tier battleship, is one of the more dangerous opponents over here. And uh, once again, it's mid tier battles, you never know what these guys are going to be doing, so we'll help as much as we can. So that's the first drop, and can we shoot his rudder off? Oh, we missed one of the torpedoes, okay. I'm. I'm. Uh, this is just something I do. I mean, if you're play, if you're a carrier player, let me know if this is actually sensible. I, I, I always try to shoot the rudders off, um, and uh, and force a damacon, because especially if I don't have something like dive bombers, uh, because floods are just so rare that module damage might be the better the better way to trigger uh, to trigger damacons, and then uh, I have a chance to get a perma flood on on enemy ships. But you know, it's just something I'll try doing. Okay, that, that's, that just took out some of the secondaries. But uh, yeah, we'll do another new, uh, drop on the New York. I think the New York is... We'll just help out with whoever's, whatever battleship is currently hammering that, that New York's broadside. Uh, yeah, once again, no, no flood. And um, yeah, I, I, think, I think with the amassed firepower Target. against that broadsiding New York here, um, even if we're not getting floods, uh, we're helping. So that's good. And I think one of our battleships is going for the cap at this point. Um, yeah. What's that? Oh, it's a friendly New York. <laughs> if, if you're getting capped out by a New York, you know you've done something wrong in your, in your, in your strategic positioning. All right, I'm not going to chase the Hawkins because the Hawkins tends to not sail in a straight line and I can't be having with that. There's a Danae. Um, that thing's got torps. 
So let's see. It's the closest what we can get to a destroyer. So let's see. Yeah, there come the torpedoes. Let's see if we can do something about the Dane because there's only one battleship on this flank. And uh, we still got two minutes out here, and I don't want to have to start uh, chasing these. So that should be... Can I get him? Yes, I got him. That's the end of the Dane. So now we just have to... Yeah, that Hawkins, someone else can deal with. Uh, this flank is more in need of, uh, of air support. So let's drop the Wyoming. And then we're waiting. Still no floods. We're waiting for our planes to come back. But yeah, uh, this sort of kind of works, I guess. Uh, especially if you're dealing with mid with low tier battleships who are not uh, actually actively dodging your. Is he gonna beach? Uh, there's also a Congo coming. Okay, Congo is a bigger problem because Congo is actually really quick. Uh, yeah, Wyoming beached, so um, he's gonna turn a little bit in order to get off that island. Now that should hit him uh, at least with the first one. The second one we might have to. Which I'm just trying to finish this guy off if, as much as possible. Come on, give me a flood. There's 12% flooding chance. It can't be that bad. Uh, where's the second wing? Okay. Yeah, that Congo is coming for us. So that's probably the last job we can do on the Wyoming. Oh, okay. Um, the Viribus takes him out anyway. Uh, yeah, the Congo is getting is getting into my detection so range circle. So I might actually have to start moving the, the carrier around <laughs> because... Okay, so hard right. Uh, get guns at the ready. And we start opening up at the Congo once, he ca once I'm spotted. Which should be any second now. Uh, yeah, I'm spotted. Okay, open up. Fire! <laughs> Fire the guns! Uh, well, at least we got more than one. It's more than the tier 6 American uh, American escort carriers can say. Okay, now that I've got the ship on the move, uh, we're gonna get... And we'll be... We actually... Uh, I think our battleship is capping, so I think we'll be fine. And I just want to move behind the island if I can and get some more torpedo drops into that Congo. Maybe I can get the kill on him. And I think... Uh, they're gonna cap out before oh <laughs> uh, might have not been enough i think he survived that torpedo hit as well but um yeah we did twenty-two thousand points of damage um, in a tier in a bottom tier carrier with me at the helm <laughs> uh this uh, this is okay uh yes because it's 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 low it's lower tier right? even even i can't mess up so badly that lower tier um uh that i will lose a lower tier battle but you know <laughs> Or that I do poorly in these things. Uh, if there are a lot of destroyers out there, I'm completely screwed. So, uh, yeah, is that a great carrier? No, it's not. I mean, I, I don't know. I wouldn't know. Maybe it is, and I just don't know how to use it. But, uh, like, the, the, the two torpedo bombers kind of feel a little bit meh in terms of their potential damage output. It's really more something... I guess Tier 5 is where it gets a little bit more interesting, so this is something to skip over. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.